Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. This is the channel that teaches you all you need to know about kitchens, about bedrooms and about home offices. Now today I'm going to be asking you, do you know the difference between a fridge freezer and a fridge and freezer? Because if you do, it can help you solve numerous design problems. Stay tuned. Okay, so before we start, I'd just like to explain a term that we use a lot in the kitchen industry, and that's the term housings. Now, as far as we're concerned, a housing is a tall cupboard that comes up higher than the worktop surface, and usually it houses, hence the name, appliances such as ovens, microwaves, fridges, freezers, even wine makers or chillers or coffee makers, whatever. So it's multi-purpose, they are multi-purpose, and even the tall larder cupboards and broom cupboards, we actually call those housings as well. Now the thing is about fitted kitchens, whenever you introduce a housing, it pinches worktop space. And as we all know, worktop space in the kitchen is absolutely invaluable. So as a designer, we have to play about with the number of housings that we incorporate into a design. And listening to clients' wish lists about certain appliances, we have to think sometimes out of the box a little bit as to how we can fit all the appliances in that the client wants without having too many housings. The only exception to this, of course, is these lovely big uh, living kitchens where you can have a run of six housings together uh, and it doesn't need plenty of worktop space left, but they are a rarity. I'm talking really about a typical average sized kitchen. Now, I'm going to use as an example, a, a real-life example, of a kitchen that I went to this week. Went for a design consultation last Tuesday. Uh, and when I walked on site, I was given the client's wish list. And part of that wish list was they wanted a 50-50 fridge freezer and two single ovens. And also, they wanted the housing run to look symmetrical, to look balanced. They didn't want the ovens off to one side or the fridge off to one side. They wanted to have a nice streamlined symmetrical look. And the only other thing I would mention at this point is the lady of the house who did 90% of the food preparation was actually over five foot nine tall. So she wasn't a short lady, she was quite tall. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run through the design process with you using CAD images, just to show you how we designed this particular kitchen because it was seemingly to start with quite an easy solution because when I was on site I noticed there was an alcove in the kitchen and this alcove was over 1900 millimeters wide 700 millimeters deep and it was absolutely perfect for sitting the housings because they would recess right back and not stand out into the kitchen and at 1900 millimeters wide it means that I could fit three 600 millimeter wide housings so it would appear I had no problem. So this is how the job progressed. So here's the first little plan. Now on here you can see, we've just got the plan there with no cupboards in at all, and you can see the alcove looking down on it, and it's, yes, over 1,900 millimetres wide. So my first idea was, was quite straightforward, really. Uh, I was going to position, as you can see in this plan, three tall housings, with the 50-50 fridge freezer to the left. In the middle were the two single ovens, one on top of the other. And then to the right-hand side, I was going to put a larder cupboard. So as you can see, that solved the problem. Here's the front elevation of that view. Well, this is the first one I did. Uh, you can see the fridge freezer on the left, 50-50, the two ovens and the larder cupboard on the right. Uh, I looked at that and I thought the one thing wrong with that is the larder cupboard on the right. It doesn't really balance with the fridge freezer. And because we can have cupboards made to size, I had the larder cupboard changed so that the frontages matched the fridge freezer to the left. And here's a front elevation of that. Okay, problem solved. I was pleased. I thought the client would really like it. So I invited the client in and we had a look at it. She liked the idea that we got symmetry. 
She'd like the idea that we got the three main appliances in, which was the 50-50 uh, fridge freezer and the two ovens. And the, the larder cupboard did offer her quite a lot of storage space as well. However, she didn't like the idea of the two ovens on top of each other. Okay, uh, back to the drawing board a little bit. I asked her why did she not like the two ovens on top of each other, and I thought she was going to say she didn't like the idea of reaching up to the top oven. So I was about to introduce the Neff hide and slide oven, uh, which I've done a video on previously, which you can uh, check out up here. But it wasn't the top oven that was the problem, because as I say, she's quite tall. She didn't fancy bending down to the bottom oven. Okay, I have to, I have to go with that and, and come up with some other idea. I immediately thought of this idea. Here you can see that the fridge freezer's to the left and with the two ovens to the right. Uh, here's the front elevation of that. But obviously, as you can see, there's no symmetry there. The ovens are off to one side, the fridge freezer's off to another. So what the heck are we going to do? Okay. So this is where you have to think out of the box a little bit and understand all the different sizes of appliances and what they're capable of doing. And in particular, in this design, I was thinking about the fridge and freezer. So rather than having a tall 50-50 fridge freezer, we split it into two separate appliances, a fridge and a freezer. Now these two separate appliances, each one of them would have the same capacity as you would have in a 50-50 fridge freezer. But by splitting them apart, gave us more opportunities. So here's the design we came up with when we split the fridge freezer apart. First of all, the plan view. You can see what we've got now. We have filled the same space. Uh, we've put the two housings in the middle. Each one of them has a single oven in it. And underneath the single oven, in one of them is the fridge, and in the other is the freezer. This leaves us with a little bit of space each side, so we fit two 300mm pull-out larder cupboards, which are fantastic cupboards for storage, each side. Now here's the elevation, and you can see now straight away that the ovens are next to each other in the middle of the room. The two cooling appliances are underneath, and you've got a balanced 300mm pull-out larder on each side. So we've achieved total symmetry. We've got great storage space. We've got a fridge and a freezer at exactly the same capacity as a 50-50, if not a little bit more, actually. And we've got the two ovens. Now, I do appreciate that when doing this, those two ovens will be a little bit higher than typical waist-height ovens. But as we've already said, this particular client was quite tall and it will be no problem. So we presented that design to the clients and they were overjoyed. It was just what they wanted and it ticks all the boxes. So I was pleased, they were pleased, and simply by understanding appliances and what's available, you can solve many kitchen design problems. Now here's a CAD drawing of the finished uh, design. You can see the low level hob area now, uh, and you can see the housings built into the alcove. It looks great, it solves the problem, and I, I was really pleased with it. And, and as I say, so was the client. Before I finish, there's just one other little thing I'd like to say. I'll just show you the same design now, but if you look at the top of the housings, when you build housings into an alcove, if you build the infill panel at the top forwards, as per this design, it makes the housings look even more built in. And I would always recommend bringing that top wall forwards, as per this visual, so you can get that effect of the housing's being built into a complete alcove and not actually set back into it. It's a purely visual thing, but I think it looks an awful lot better. Okay, so there we go. There's a short video on purely on design, how to manipulate your appliances to make the housings work. And this same principle can work when you're trying to juggle with numbers of housings and combine appliances together so that you're not, you've got three housings as opposed to four and therefore gain worktop space back. We'll be doing more videos on this subject. I hope you'll tune in. Obviously, if you want to see more videos along this line, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. That'd be fantastic. If you've got any queries or questions, bang them in the comments box below. We promise to get back to you 
and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.